I'm just going to basically offer you my perspective on the Hamas stroke Palestine versus Israel conflict. The issue of land, Palestine is asked to have part of Israel um, to itself. Now, Israel is commonly known as the spiritual home of, of the chosen people, and this has a biblical uh, context, it has a political context, and a spiritual one. If you go to the Old Testament, um, it refers to the chosen people uh, being promised this, this part of land, Eretz Yisrael, promised by God himself, thank you God, to the chosen people. Now the Jews of today are believed to be the ancestors of those chosen people that are referred to in the Old Testament. So that's sort of like the biblical uh, context here and also that's part of the spiritual context broken down. Now Jews have typically been persecuted since before the birth of Christ um, beginning with the Judaism was the common religion in parts of the Eastern world and with the um, sort of influx of the Roman Empire Judaism was abandoned and uh, if you like outlawed and pagan um, and Christian uh, religious practices took hold and the Jews that existed at that time were either forced to abandon their Judaism, um, either expelled or persecuted if they were found to be practicing Judaism and some Jews were forced in the end to be seen to be converted to Christianity but many Jews actually continued with their Jewish practices and rituals but they were forced underground so that's the, the early days. Um, if we look at what's happened to the Jews in centuries following that time, um, certainly in England, uh, where I'm based, um, you know, you've got situations occurring uh, periodically where the Jews have been forcibly removed, expelled from the country by the reigning king of the time of unofficial capacity by the local community. And so this anti-Semitism culminated in the Holocaust most recently. The Jews after, um, after the Holocaust, those that survived, thank you God, um, found themselves with no home. They were still vulnerable to anti-Semitism because it had, they still didn't have a land of their own. So that meant that in practical terms, wherever the Jews chose to live, they were at some point going to be open to the idea that they could be persecuted again and maybe forced to leave that place. So to cut a long story short, um, it was decided by the British government in, in what I think was called the Balfour Declaration that Israel would be, uh, if you like, given to the Jews as their own land. And because of the biblical context, which I spoke about at the beginning of this clip, um, where this was the land in any event that God promised to the chosen people um, in return for observing his covenants um, and his laws and the Ten Commandments. Because it was promised to them already, this land now has a huge spiritual significance for the Jews. It's their land where they feel safe uh, to an extent and it's their home. So now what's happened is the Palestinians who laid claim to that land uh, hundreds of years ago when the Palestinians lived on this land and then they left. And the story goes that during the time that they left, the Jews came to that land, the chosen people inhabited that land. And when the Palestinians came back, they found that they could no longer reside there. And so now the Palestinians want to return to that land and the Jews, understandably, today aren't comfortable with that because the, the Palestinians seem to have a, a again, a huge simplification, but a, a contentious relationship with the Jews. You've got the role of Hamas, which is the political organization, which and is, is causing damage and destruction. There's, there's a conflict there because of it. The Israelis are defending themselves against Hamas, but Hamas really are saying, we want our land back. The Jews are saying, we don't want to share our land with you because this is um, Israel. 
of course, the, the point about Israel is that the you've got Jerusalem, which has religious significance for many, many, many religious groups bear a, a spiritual affinity with Jerusalem. Um, for Jews, you've got the Wailing Wall. For the Muslims, it also has significance. For the Christians, uh, it also has significance. So it's, in many ways, Jerusalem is a place, it's a spiritual hotbed for diverse religious uh, belief systems all um, descending on this one part of the world to um, uphold or witness to or uh, worship or in the sense of the Jews to get closer to uh, their maker, God, you know, our creator. Um, so the Palestinians want their land back and they're coming at it from a Christian perspective and from a, a Muslim perspective, um, but it's threatening the spiritual roots of the Jews. And then added to that is the future historical perspective because the Bible refers to the chosen people and the Jews uh, are believed to be ancestors of the chosen people. And now the biblical history is able to be reconciled and the current history. But in the future, and this is my personal view, in the future it would be an anomaly from a biblical perspective and from a religious perspective. If the Palestinians succeed in living in Jerusalem or in Israel under a non-Jewish government, it's as if the Palestinians could be seen at some point to have been the chosen people that, that, was, that were referred to in the Old Testament. Who were the people that God meant when he gifted, promised that land to the chosen people in return for uh, honouring the covenant? Which people did he have in mind? Skipping back thousands of years to understand that, I think most people accept that the chosen people were Jewish people being believed to be the ancestors of the chosen people. Whether or not the Palestinians were ever perceived to be the chosen people, and whether the Palestinians were intended to be the beneficiaries of that promised land, is a moot point, something that's to be debated and fully understood. And that in itself would really cause conflict because, again, it's being examined through different religious uh, lenses, if you like. So, are, are the Palestinians the chosen people? That's a question. If the Palestinians succeed in, in, in inhabiting Israel, but not under, the, under a Jewish government, how will that affect history? In 10, 20 years' time, when we teach our children uh, you know, about the Bible, and they look to see, okay, where is Israel? Who lives there? Are these the people? In, in fact, an interesting parallel can be drawn with the situation with Africa and Egypt and um, ancient Egypt. People, history has forgotten almost, because history has been rewritten over the years and retold in different ways over the years, People have lost sight of the fact that the ancient Egypt was a black Nubian Egypt and the, um, the teachings that came out of ancient Egypt at that time about every aspect of our life, politics, society, religion, medicine, economics, trade and so on, all of those teachings have descended from black Nubian people. but. Because history has been developed over the years and retaught from dis di different perspectives, i.e. Western perspectives, non-Western perspectives, that fact has got lost. Now, people look at Egypt and seeing, see Caucasians living in Egypt and Arabs living in Egypt. Um, and so they believe that those teachings came from Caucasian Arabs, when in reality, uh, it, those teachings came from Black Nubians. So that the danger is that when we rewrite history with the decisions we make today, whether they be political decisions or religious decisions, they have a bearing on our future generations.